Oh, what up? What it is. What it is. I'm alive. Hi, what's up, guys? <laughs> How's it going? Cynthia, thanks for your resub. Hell yeah. It's a party now. How long has it been since I streamed? Like two weeks? I don't know. Uh, a week and some change. Oh, whoops. That was not what I meant. Listen, in my defense, depression. <laughs> uh, Jelly Boy, how's it going? You scored a free TV, nice. I think, do we even own a TV that we paid for anymore? You're staring at the only one that I paid for. Yeah. Jeremy's a master at finding TVs on the side of the road. Yep. Granted, all of our monitors and TVs that we have that were free have something wrong with them in one way or another, but like, it's minor shit. Minor shit that is easily usable and I don't have to worry about what's selling them. Like one of ours has like a line of pixels that's out <laughs> or whatever, whatever. Uh, oh yeah, I'm trying to remember what we did last time. We got, we fought our first really rad boss battle, yeah, that which was is, dope. uh, I did not expect to find so early in the game, considering the last one. Uh, and that bitch in jail. My Animal Crossing Island is depression themed. It's called Sadagascar. That's an amazing name. If the target's on fire, it's technically a find. Yeah, right? My island is actually called escapism. <laughs> Basically the same thing. Ooh. That's how I handle shit. No, I'm, it's, there's, we're not kidding when people just throw TVs on the side of the road in this town. Yeah, and there's, like, nothing wrong, haven't you found, like, several where there was literally nothing wrong with them? I've found a lot of TVs where there's nothing wrong it's with them. perfect them. working condition. I don't know if it's, like, a weird southern culture thing for people to just, for fun, put TVs on the curb and... You know, like, maybe they were going to do something with it, and we're, we've, we're actual, like, thieves, and we didn't know, but I don't know. You, the Southerners have strange customs to me. Um, Zach, how about we grab a bite to eat? Oh, shit. I can think straight on an empty stomach. Um, um, are we close to the diner? I don't think so. Yeah, we're, uh, we're past the, the time of getting couches off the side of the road <laughs> yeah we had a bad run-in with bed bugs about 10 years ago and ever since then i do not pick up furniture um electronics fine furniture no okay so we need to eat and go back to york's room um oh wait can't i um call an uber or whatever now sure, it's right there left mm. left left straight in front of the thing there yep oh okay Oh, shit. That's not the run button. My bad. Yeah, I'm not even gonna mess with you guys. Like, I think Bedwugs was probably the worst six months of my life. Was it six months? Yep. I was incredibly allergic. Hello? 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 Where are you going? I, I'm trying to go... The diner? There. <laughs> I kept going around it. Oh, well, because we got to stay there anyway, right? They've got food there, don't they? Yeah. yeah There's that yeah, little place yeah. where we ate the beginning of the game. Yeah, that's right. But yeah, they didn't trouble Jeremy at all, but I was extremely allergic to the bites, and it was misery, and we got rid of... We moved, and we got rid of all of our furniture, basically. Yep. Um, and, you know, it's their problem now, I guess. Yo, diagonal. <laughs> oh, no, kitten. What did kitten do? Oh. Other than exist. It's barely. I got a lawnmower off the side of the road once, and I'm pretty sure I stole someone's lawnmower after I left it there to get water or something. That's what I'm like about the TVs. I'm like, why do you leave this TV here that's, in, that's doing perfectly fine? You didn't even try to sell it or anything. You just left it on the side of the road. Are we the baddies? Did we steal somebody's uh, TV? No, I mean, we didn't. No, I, I know, but I'm just... I can't understand why people do that. 
feed me. Ding ding. My restaurant serves only the highest quality Creole cuisine. Hell yeah. The real deal. Which ain't too easy to find in a backwoods town like this. Did I hear wrong then? Set me straight, would you, chef? I thought that Cajun food was the norm in Acadiana. Why would you go out of your way to serve Creole food here? When I was a young, I trained myself at a famous restaurant in Orleans. A famous restaurant? That's incredible. Was it Arnaud's? Antoine's? No, don't tell me I got it. Brennan's, right? None of those, actually. <laughs> but that place taught me how to really cook. Go on and try something, you'll see. I'm not going to tell you which one it is, but you're just going to have to take my word for it. Very intriguing. All right, what do you guys want? Got barbecue shrimp. Ooh, seafood platter. And bananas foster. Actually, the seafood platter looks pretty dope. I'm not going to lie. It's expensive, but I bet it's worth it. Nerd McGurd, hello. I hope everyone is doing well tonight. <gasps> Wait, I, do I get my fortune out of it? That food was unbelievable. I see you weren't lying about undergoing training at that famous restaurant. But you only drank the coffee. Ah, now you just trying to embarrass me, miss. But I still appreciate it, though. You must have undergone some rigorous training in order to gain such refined technique. You put so much care into preparing everything just right. Oh, I just realized the game audio is a little low. And your manipulation of that low temp flame in order to bring out such a pleasant fragrance. Simply, this is true Creole food. My bad. You have to tell me now. Which famous restaurant did you train yourself at? <laughs> Come on, chef. We need to know. Zach and I are begging you. Ah. You drive a hard bargain, mister. All right. I reckon I can give you a hint. Really? Oh, just a hint now. What the? I'm Fine. not... We'll take it. Just, just say, say it. it. It's the restaurant that serves the most famous fried chicken in all of Louisiana. Crispy, crunchy. You know what I'm talking about? Bonafide fried chicken. No. You can't mean... Oh, yeah. I'll bet they worked you pretty hard. God damn it. Sweary. <laughs> mm -hmm, you betcha. So that's how you acquired the mental fortitude necessary to cook such amazing food. Oh, my time there taught me just how tough city life really is. Amazing. Zach, did you hear all that? I mean, I heard it, that's but... That's an incredible story, David. It sure is. You really are a true chef. Both Zach and I have given you our official approval. You got... Did that say you got no money for help maintenance? Nah. I couldn't tell. Whatever. That so quick. Like, what? Yo, but they got, they got pizza. Actually, this is a pretty good spread. That pie. That pie is massive. It's massive. <laughs> uh, Look at this huge lad. That is... Wow. Wait, so why were we going back to our... You gotta go to your room. Yeah, but what was happening? To go over the case. Oh, okay. Right? That pie looked delicious. I want pie now. I would murder someone for like a cherry pie or a strawberry pie. Zach, let's go over our progress. We've got a complicated case on our hands this time, especially as far as the Clarkson's relationships go. But in a way, it's also a simple one. Understanding them on a deeper level is the most efficient way to uncover the truth behind all this. That's the one thing I'm sure of. Well, see, the one was like an alien and like <laughs> rebirthed herself. That was that was neat. Now she's in jail. And now she's in jail. Oh. Meow. 
Brown. Zach, let's start with the bam, people bam, who were closest bam. to the victim. Lise Clarkson, the victim, is the granddaughter of the current head of the Clarkson family. Her mother is Galena, an ex-actress, and Lise clearly inherited her beauty. She was an actress? I don't remember them saying that. Except for her eyes, that is. Lise's eye color matches that of her father's. Now, do you remember who Lise Clarkson's father is? Um... Shit, dude. Danny? Yeah, because we met him. Hmm. That's right. Lisa's father is Danny Clarkson. He's not really a Clarkson. He, like, married into the family or whatever. Yo, what's up, brother man? His real name is Daniel E. Clarkson. Well, oh. he's from Florida and used to be the CEO of a talent agency. Oh, that, that makes, sense. makes sense. Danny struck the heart of Galena and successfully became a member of the esteemed Clarkson family. Despite being the son-in-law, he acts like he was born a Clarkson. But he's still just the son-in-law. Next comes what happened to Lise. According to Alexis, Lise said that the man was as tall as an oak tree. I believe that's the same 10-foot tall giant who made the fingerprints we found in the cold storage warehouse. Hmm. Now, what did this man do to Lise prior to her murder? He stole her chocolate sundae. Uh, I think he invited her to the jazz bar, isn't that right? I thought stalked her. He did stalk her, actually. But who was it? What was the jazz bar about? The stylish woman. No, but... Which we have to go to next, I think. No, oh, yeah, okay, we haven't been there yet. <laughs> the narrator's just the douche in law for saying that. Nah, Danny... Yeah, yes, that's it, you gotta know, Danny. He is kind of a prick. The man as tall as an oak tree followed Lisa around and watched her. Despite his towering stature, he must have been rather shy. Or perhaps he was merely biding his time and planned to kidnap her from the very start. If that's nah. the case, there should have been some evidence left at the scene of the crime. Hmm. Zach, we're still missing some puzzle pieces. Now, I got a feeling this Avery guy was just like a big sweetheart and was just sad that she was dead. And that's why he took her body or something. Or he was manipulated. Because he's, yeah. he's kind of like really gullible. But he seems Speaking like a sweet the bean. The crime, I did some profiling in the plantation's control room. The truth it revealed to us was nauseating and horrific. But we need to touch upon it if we wish to proceed. Isn't that right, Zach? Yeah, Who sure. actually murdered Lise Clarkson? I mean, it was her mom. Yes, that's right. Lise's own mother killed her while she was dreaming about some bizarre new world. This is by far the vilest and ugliest crime we've ever seen. The fact that Galena yes. set up- Yeah, I was just about to say yet. It's even more complicated. Remember, not a single sacrificial human murder has ever been proven and documented in all of American history. I'm not sure that that's true, but all right. The real world is far more complex than what we see in films and video games. And sacrificing a human life for something else is no easy task. In conclusion, Zach, through our investigation, we found one character who sticks out more than anyone else. You know exactly who I'm thinking about, don't you? We'll need to have a word with her in the near future. Oh, right. Okay, the, the stylish, stylish woman. woman. Who's the stylish woman we saw during the profiling? Uh, I'll know the name. I see it. No, I won't. <laughs> I guess it's all just Professor R. <laughs> okay, I was like, no, I'm dyslexic, so uh, is yeah. there like a trick in here? Yeah, they're Professor all just Professor R. R. Okay. We haven't met her yet, but she's deeply intertwined with this case. Let's wait for the skeletal gentleman to guide us to her with an oracle. Or we could just go to the jazz bar. <laughs> Zach, what do you think? Isn't the deep south something? The people here are just as warm as the weather. And the food is to die for. 
They'll talk shit about you behind your back, though. Might be nice to move down here after I retire. What, still too early to talk about that? You may be right. We've already seen that, actually. The, the priest man came right up to you and was talking shit about, that, about the yeah. old woman. <laughs> after all, this case has only just begun. And he was like, I just wish she would come to church. And we're just like, bro, maybe she just doesn't want to go to church. Leave her alone. Hmm. So we have to organize evidence. Uh, it kind of reminds me of like a more convoluted way of doing the chapter end wrap ups. Yeah. From the last game. Mm. Or maybe they were they at the beginning of the chapter, maybe? Oh no, the beginning of the chapter they did the the previously on, like yeah, it was a TV show. Recap. I kinda liked that they did those though, at the start of every chapter. Oh, hello. Oh, shit. There he Lena is. can't be the killer. They're making all this shit up. Aw, he's cute. <laughs> I wonder if he has a name. If what Boss? you say is true, <gasps> How do you plan to prove it? It's nearly been a century since the Clarksons first took control of Lucari. One hundred years. Damn it, I know this guy's a super piece of shit. Legacy would live on for two. No. Three hundred at least. But he looks so cool. I'm gonna find the real killer and beat the living dog shit out of him. Yet it looks to me like times have changed. We ain't in the good old days no more. You understand me, boy. Yes, sir. I'm right there with you, Paul. I'm gonna continue what you started, sir, and make the Clarkson family strong again. But first, I need to find whoever really killed Lise and bash their fucking brains in. I saw this coming. Ever since the day Lenny left home, the town of Lucare has been cursed. We can't stop what's happening now. It's too late. It's beyond me. No. It's beyond the minds of anyone who comes from the olden days. You understand me now, boy? Yes, sir. Believe me, I do. I don't think he understands, guys. Just leave everything to me, Paul. Hmm. Are you serious about this? Yes, sir. Right hand of God. Look right in my eyes. I ain't lying. I'm serious. I just need you to lend me some troops, sir. We need retribution right now. Calling it. He's the next That's boss the fight. I've been given, and I intend to do it. Well, then, let me ask you one more time. Are you serious about this? Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm a Clarkson. And all Clarksons have a job to do. Isn't that what we always say? Mm-hmm. Then I'll need an arm. Yeah. What? Well, now. You want to use my troops. I'm going to need to know whether or not you're really serious about this. Just one arm. Slide it on through that wire there, and it'll take care of it for you. Oh, I don't know. If, I was hoping maybe he'd had a name. I was going to name him Brusco. You're joking, right? Daniel, have I ever told you a single joke? Uh, no, but... If you want to become a real Clarkson... <laughs> Then you done got yourself a job to do. Wait, Paul. I, 
I, I get it now. You, you want me to stick it in and pull it out at the last minute, right? You, you, you want to see if I got guts or not, but there, there's going to be another way. You, you can't be serious, sir. Hey, hey, knock it off, you assholes. Let me go. He's just joking with me. Let me go, goddammit. Oh, please, sir, don't do it's this. Just floating. <laughs> Tell me this is a joke. I love him. He's so big and round. Big Chongus. <laughs> Bruce goes got to eat. I am a Clarkson. And no matter how our fortune falls, all Clarksons have a job to do. All right. That be the law of this land. Man, your character design is so cool. What a waste. Yo, what up? <laughs> All right. Somebody's living their life. Hey, it's uh. Oh yeah, it's the, the chick that uh, like sometimes levitates when she practices. Yeah. Damn, he is jamming out. He is just going. <laughs> All right. I'm into it. <laughs> episode one. Oh, wow. I didn't realize we were right at the end of the episode, huh? Well. S rank. Noise. All right. Especially considering how much I fucked around. <laughs> Does that mean we do get it previously on? Because for my dumb ADHD brain, it does help for me to be reminded of what's happening. What? Oh, Yo. we're back. You can hear me, right? I'll be with you soon. Wow. I'm not sad. Honestly, Honestly, I can't, can't wait. wait. It's mm. all I think about lately. I mean, we'll be together again. We'll get to discuss movies and food again. Everyone around here has bad taste. This is kind of sad. They don't yeah. Understand things the way we do. I don't think. I think I'm floating. Filled with shitty people. A little bit. Oh, that reminds me. There are movie theaters and restaurants. <laughs> as soon as I get there, let's go grab some peanut butter hamburgers. I'm sorry. Actually, that sounds delicious. Wow. Y'all ever had peanut butter hamburgers? They're delicious. Rush me. You just need to wait a bit longer. I still have one job left to do. That was Emily, right? It looks like her. It looks like it. Or else I'd never be able to face you. Just, just give me a little more time. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna take a nap now. Hmm. Oh, hey, we're back to the present. Sort of. So, Lise's mother, Galena Clarkson, confessed to murdering Lise. Yup. <sighs> but then immediately afterwards, she went insane. So you had no choice but to detain her. What a terribly convenient story. 
Damn, I forgot how much her spine is broken. <laughs> like the character on screen gagged when you called peanut butter burgers delicious. I mean, but they are delicious. You were the first person to find the suspect hiding at a farm on the edge of town. And you even got her to confess to the crime right then and there. Did anyone else get a chance to hear Galena's confession? Only us. How did you even find that shack in the first place? I was skateboarding around. I'm not gonna lie. Metaphysical offender profiling. Meta what? Should I know this word? Metaphysical offender profiling. The term appears six times in the Lucare report and 14 times in the 2010 Greenvale report. As long as you're solving cases, the people in charge don't really care what sort of words you use. But we're different. You utilized a highly abnormal method to instantly hone in on a suspect. Then you did it again and again. Bro, we're broken. I don't know what to tell you. And every time you used it, one term kept appearing in your files. Metaphysical offender profiling. Mr. Morgan, would you mind explaining to us what this term means? We could try. But no matter what words we used, you'd never be able to understand. You see, it doesn't pertain to this side. Come, my fairy. Stop hiding back there and give them the explanation they so desire. <laughs> what? You're too shy? <laughs> Mr. Morgan? <laughs> Mr. Morgan! Come on out. Don't be afraid. You can do it. It's okay. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I keep expecting him to access. burp and call me Morty. <laughs> Don't underestimate me, Morgan. I know you and the Clarkson share a deeper connection. Now I can't unsee it because he's wearing the coat and everything. <laughs> Much deeper than how it appears on the surface. I need to shake him with something else that's directly connected to the Clarksons. I'm gonna jog his memory by force. Hmm. Man, but I want to look at those Greenvale case files, though. Mr. Morgan, I noticed that several parts of this report have been redacted. Ooh, spicy. Here, one individual's name has been erased from the key figure list. Would you mind telling me why? Someone in charge must have thought it was unimportant. Or maybe even inappropriate. Why would they think that? And why How would should they? we know? We've never understood what those people do. Well, I took the liberty of trying to restore what was taken out. Doesn't that isn't that against some kind of code or something? Well, it's FBI, so Normal I don't know. Normal ink was used to blot it out, so I was able to recover part of it. Here's what it says: Sapling <laughs> salesman. Oh, it's Casey. All the other redacted parts seem to be connected to this person. But I can't think of a single reason why this individual would need to be removed from the report. Who, Yo. Who removed it? Yeah, what if Kaysen is, is like way higher up still, and goes yeah. deeper than we know? Uh, That's disturbing. Why is he so untouchable? Oh, him. He's nothing. We were barking up the wrong tree. Well, uh, excuse, what? Meaning? Can't include someone who doesn't exist in an official report, now can we? I'm sorry, Nani the fuck? Doesn't exist. You mean he had nothing to do with the case? <laughs> yeah, you could say that. <laughs> we gotta get the we gotta get the honeycomb, Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it.
You guys are killing me. I'm never going to be able to unsee this. <laughs> According to you, at the beginning of this case, the victim's body was being stored in the warehouse on purpose. Is that the truth? They really put her body there alongside food and other perishables? Right? Isn't that what I said when we got there? It's a little fucked up, isn't it? Kind of unsanitary. It's in the report. No. The report only says it was stored using the most effective and shockingly inhuman method possible. If you can think of a better phrase, we're all ears. The report isn't wrong, you know. In fact, that might actually be the most accurate way of describing it. See, I like Simon. It's precise, and it's also kind of poetic, you know? Well, Simon, we never would have taken you for a poet. <laughs> right? Ah, oh, Simon. He's staring daggers into him, though. You two think this is a joke? Yeah. Lise Clarkson's body was discovered in that cold storage warehouse after 14 long years. If you'd only done a proper investigation, we probably would have found her much sooner. <sighs> that poor girl. We still regret the fact that we never got to meet her. We're sorry from the bottoms of our hearts. I only hope it didn't happen that way by design. Will you comfort me? <sighs> Thank you, my fairy. <laughs> Hmm. Old messy letters, huh? Hang on, what else? Anything else? No. I think that's it. All right. Those letters look very old. Wow, why do we have so much mail from Lakari? The postmark suggests they were sent out from Louisiana. And I suspect that dragonfly mark belongs to the Clarkson family. <clears throat> so what if it does? A stalker has been harassing Patricia Clarkson for several years now. Did you know about this? Constant silent there phone goes her calls. Hand. Yep. Unmarked letters. It's in there. Wait, do we know Pat Patricia Clarkson? I don't know. She also spotted a suspicious figure lurking near her mansion several times. And just last week, her employees spotted a strange figure lurking in the vicinity. Wait. What's the little girl's name that was following us? She never- she was never introduced as any part of the Clarkson family, but wasn't her name Patricia? The day someone else coincidentally used your alias and traveled to Louisiana. That's very intriguing. Aligned symbolism. Lise Clarkson also reported being harassed by a stalker just before she was murdered. You're aware of this, correct? Because I didn't find any mention of this in your report. No direct connection to the case. Hmm. That's what we must have thought. The visionary lies to himself, the liar only to others. Which are you? That's enough for now. This all has nothing to do with the case. Damn, his eyes are bloodshot as hell. Yeah. Besides, there's no evidence that proves those letters are from her. Isn't that right, my fairy? I knew it wouldn't go that easily. Maybe I should try asking my questions in a different way. I could use Agent Jones here. Hmm. <laughs> Nervous Simon. <laughs> Agent Jones. Are you paying attention? Or do you intend to waste Mr. Morgan's precious time? 
Uh, no. Sorry. I'm just a little tired. I'm listening. I'm listening. Take your hand out of your pocket. Didn't they teach you any manners at Quantico? Oh, no. Uh, right. Guess they slipped my mind. My bad. <laughs> I'm actually kind of nervous. I'm not used to this sort of thing. Data analysis is my specialty, you know. I, uh, I'm sure I'd be able to calm down a bit if I had some pizza, though. All right. Yeah, Simon's a mood. I like him. <laughs> uh, the FBI needs to do something about their lack of personnel. I'll have to ask the questions myself. Man, chill out on my, my boy Simon. How should I start? Maybe I should look back over the files and... Calmly reassess the situation. Hmm. So far, everything checks out with the report. Hmm. But there were always some parts of the report that didn't make sense. He expects me to believe he just happened to solve a case this difficult while he was on vacation. I don't know why it's so hard for her to imagine that someone could be good at their job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Physical offender profiling. I won't let him distract me with his fancy made-up words. After you arrested Galena Clarkson, you had a run-in with the Clarksons. At least that's what it says in the report. What exactly happened there? Just a simple run-in, that's all. Nothing but a single phenomenon. Chasing hollow instances like that won't lead you closer to the truth. Truth doesn't work like that. A hollow phenomenon, which resulted in a mountain of corpses. What? <laughs> they just hit the microphone, my bad. Oh, Belle. We think we finally understand what you're trying to say. But don't be so voracious. Uh, how about another cup of coffee? We've still got a long way to go, you know. <laughs> I want to know what the hell's going on with Kaysen. It's coarsely ground, so there should only be four teaspoons per cup. Four teaspoons? Bro. No more, no less. Next, the coffee travels from the funnel to the siphon. For somebody who's waiting the coffee, four teaspoons is pretty meager, in my opinion. We just missed Vorde. Don't remind me. Simon, normally you only do surveillance in order to gather data, correct? Hiding microphones and cameras, sifting through garbage, wiretapping, shadowing, tracing credit card histories. You'll do whatever it takes to gather data in order to prevent crimes. That's how the FBI works. Uh, well, yeah, you're right. No reason in hiding it now, I guess. <laughs> Why do you ask? Our Southern Belle has adopted a very peculiar M.O. It's almost like she has a special power just like us. <laughs> You've been watching us this entire time, haven't you, Belle? that window I don't need to answer that question you came here on New Year's Eve then spent 49 hours watching us until you returned to your hotel room last night you observed us the entire time without sleep or rest damn wow and you only ate once some pizza delivered by Simon aside from that you never drank any water or relieved yourself you simply sat there and continued to watch us. Damn, she didn't even take a piece? Wow. How do you live like that? You have <laughs> visions, too, don't you? You came here solely to hear us talk, didn't you? But then, 
Why bother watching us for over two days beforehand? You didn't come to talk with us. You came because you wanted to see this apartment with your own eyes. And because you're already convinced of something. Isn't that right? He who fights with monsters should see to it that he himself does not become a monster. And if you gaze long into an abyss, the abyss also gazes into you. But I... Oh, coffee. Thank you, my fairy. If you hadn't been paying attention, this coffee would have all gone to waste. Damn. The pus in our brains. It really has a way of interfering with our lives. The what now? That's a mood. <laughs> I know exactly what he's talking about. I didn't remember. When she came along. Mm -hmm. No. No, what's... Coffee. Yes, coffee. <laughs> I kind of just like letting him ramble, just in case I can pick up something interesting. I thought he said case and came along. Yeah, I could have gone my whole life without knowing Vorday existed. I saw it trending on Twitter and I was like, this has to be a mistake. What the Christ? This is friggin' delicious. I thought I was gonna shit myself for a second there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you might. Coffee does that to people. Come on, Aaliyah, take a sip. Trust me. I'm not exaggerating here. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> it's better than any coffee I've ever tasted. Of course it is. Coffee is a sacred drink. Coffee saved us. If not for its oracle, we would be on the other side right now. So I never forget to pay my respects to coffee. Especially at critical moments like this. Big black cumulonimbus clouds are in the sky. And that sound. Thunder snow is coming. Thunder snow. Thunder snow. <laughs> yeah. I'm very sorry, Jelly Boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Come on, don't glare at me like that, Aaliyah. I told you, I'm out of my element here, remember? This isn't the time or the place. Well, yeah, I know. I'm just really nervous. I mean, Morgan's a legend. And now he's right in front of us, and things are all tense. I'm sure it'd give any normal agent a stomachache. <sighs> Incidentally, Simon, why did you decide to stop working out in the field? Uh, don't ask. It's a long story. I don't mind. We have lots of time, don't we? I could even make you another cup of coffee, if you like. <sighs> then he really would shit himself. Yep. Uh, fine then. I'll try to make it brief. See, I used to work out in the field. I even had my own partner. But we had a little rivalry that sort of ruined our relationship. It was over a woman, of course. You know how it goes. We fell in love with the same girl. At the same workplace, too. Then one day, the three of us went to go do a stakeout at a restaurant over in East Boston. I pretended to be a customer while my partner waited in the car, and she waited in the building across the way. Well, it only took a few minutes for my partner and I to lose our heads. We started engaging in this dumb contest to see who could impress her more. Oh, that's the biggest mistake you could have ever made, yeah, my friend. Dad, I knew I was going to lose. Then, something happened. Right in front of me, a customer starts choking on something. Her face was pale, froth at the mouth, the whole nine yards. I got up at once, but my partner stopped me. Didn't want us to blow our cover. Dude. So what did I do? I ignored him. Help the guy anyway. I couldn't stand by and watch that. I couldn't help myself. 
seriously like who is like that man's gonna die but don't don't you dare save him next thing i knew i was a hero the guy survived the restaurant thanked me and i'd even managed to win the heart of you know who it felt pretty good you know one-upping my partner right in front of his very eyes but that was the beginning of the end A few days later, she and I went to go get some bubble tea at a cafe in Brookline. Mm -hmm. And a man comes up to me and said, I'm here to thank you on behalf of the person you saved in that restaurant. Feeling a bit cocky, I said, All in a day's work, my good man. And tried to brush him away. But he held out an envelope to me and said, My client broke three ribs thanks to the unnecessary Heimlich maneuver you administered to him. Bro. <laughs> he wants you to ensure that he'll be able to get the proper treatment. I thought I'd save someone, but all I ended up doing is wasting a lot of my precious time wrapped up in an astronomically stupid court case. It also blew our cover, so our target found out about us. In the end, Ow. I was taken out of the field and banished to a meaningless job that anyone with half a brain could do. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean it like that. Anyway, uh, well, that's what happened. Yeah, little do you know, that guy wanted to die that day. <laughs> that's just how it rolls. <laughs> that's how it became Jelly Man Unclean. Oh, God. Oh, no. I'm sorry for your loss of innocence. <laughs> Voice acting is my passion. Love of my life <laughs> went back to being a lonesome loser. What, she left you over that? She wasn't worth it, bro. <laughs> wow. That's why I hate being out in the field. Oh, come on. I tell you all that and you're not even going to say anything? I'm going to tell you your partner sucked and your girl sucked. That was... long. Sorry. <laughs> hey, I warned you. I told you it'd be long. Oh. <laughs> Poor Simon. I like Simon. <laughs> Si he's now upgraded to Silent Simon. <laughs> oh boy. Do you hear that thunder? It's probably gonna snow soon. We're in Massachusetts. That's the norm for this time of year. Well, I'm not used to the cold. If possible, I'd like to finish this up before we get stuck in a snowstorm. Agent Jones, after we're done here, I... Agent Jones, is something the matter? Snap out of it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I know, I know. Do you? Then stop daydreaming. Dude, leave him alone. Okay. Stop okay. bullying him. I just... You just what? I just... My stomach's been letting some thunder loose, too. <laughs> I tell you, it's the coffee, man. You shouldn't have the coffee. Thunder? The, uh... That coffee was just so good, it... It what? We don't have all day here. The coffee was just so good, it, uh... <laughs> summoned forth a massive tsunami from within me. I'm gonna use that line. <laughs> Excuse me? What is wrong with you? Now is really not the time for this. As says someone right who didn't. door at the end of the hallway. Piss for two days. Thanks, pal. Ooh, hold on. You can make it. <laughs> oh, I super relate to this man. Oh my god. We promise you, we did not put laxatives in the coffee. Coffee is a sacred drink, remember? It's just how coffee is sometimes. Mm. Motherfucker. <laughs> Raise your hand if coffee makes your stomach upset. You can't There's see no it. I'm raising my hand. Ford omitted information linking Morgan to the Clarksons. I need to get him to confess. Oh, yeah. That reminds me. There's a secret weapon in Agent Jones's briefcase. Oh, hell yeah. Have you ever seen this before? And please, don't say no. What is that? 
Sang Rouge. Oh, drugs. The drug we once chased. What about it? Sang Rouge is still circulating. It's changed shape and its composition is slightly different now. But it's still very much alive. But only in a very limited part of Louisiana. You aren't surprised? Did you somehow know this would happen? Copies of another drug being circulated isn't exactly a rare case. But Saint Rouge is special. The inimitable Enigma Powder. The origin. It has many names, and no one was ever able to copy it. We've also been trying to figure out what it's made from ever since it appeared. But it's impossible to analyze. Say what now? <laughs> After all, it appears to be made from common ingredients that can be found anywhere. But if you try to use those ingredients, all you'll end up with is a mundane hallucinogen like DMT. If you're lucky. No. Saint Rouge requires a special recipe. The original recipe. Which someone's been guarding this entire time. Someone who survived the incident in Le Carré. Huh. How... This takes... We're in 2019, right? Yeah. You should be able to break down the chemical composition... ...to an, an exact, like... Mr. Morgan, I heard that you were always a smoker. Did you ever wonder if that was the reason you contracted your illness? What does that have to do with this case? Nothing. I'm just personally curious about it. Sometimes, people die in car accidents, regardless of how well they take care of their health. Ah, this argument. Other times, they slip on their bathroom floors and crack open their heads. <laughs> Isn't that right, my fairy? I'm not concerned with statistics. I'm just curious about you, right here, right now. Yeah, that argument is a little bullshit. Like, I get it, the idea behind it of, like, enjoy life because you could die at any moment. It is technically true. However, that should not give you any reason to hasten death along by your own means. <laughs> we switched over from nicotine to this. It's less addictive. That's one step in the right direction, isn't it? Also, marijuana is not harmful, so, you know, good on you, York. Perhaps. If we're talking about withdrawal symptoms or physical dependencies. But it still seems like you're smoking too much at once. Honestly, it looks to me like you have a mental dependency. <laughs> Maybe. But so what if we do? Surely you know about gateway drugs, yes? I'll never forget that fucking commercial. <laughs> When a person starts to use one drug, it becomes much easier for them to branch out and try other drugs as well. The first drug acts as the gateway that leads them to stronger substances. Oh. Are you trying to say that's going to happen to us? No. I'm simply saying there's a possibility. Hmm. I don't know. I think nicotine is just as addictive as any other drug. I think he's made a bit of an improvement. Marijuana is super not detrimental to your health the way that, that nicotine is. Immediately after they found Lisa's body, I went to go see Patricia. In order to interrogate her, of course. So you told us. But I was unable to meet with her. She refused to speak with you, didn't she? That's so like her. No, she didn't get the chance to. You see, she's gone missing. Ah, shit. What? To put it more accurately, no one's seen her since the afternoon of the 28th. According to her employee, she shut herself up in her room for several months before she disappeared. Oh. But since that sort of thing happened often, they didn't think anything of it. On the morning of New Year's Eve, they noticed her window was open, and when they went up to check on her, she was gone. But 
No one knows how long her window had been open for. She shuts herself in her room for months on end, and they just became to accept that as a normal occurrence. Also, everyone judo is here. Say hi. Yep. He's being sweet. Hi, judo. What are you doing? Woke up from a nap this and is just pets. my hypothesis, but on December 28th, a strange man visited Lucare and was spotted near her mansion. That man must have found some way to lure Patricia into his car, the 89 Cadillac that he bought used. Then, the two of them drove north to Trenton where they boarded a train to Boston. They would have arrived here around midnight on the 29th, or perhaps early morning on the 30th. I believe this man is the same Billy Bishop whose name was previously recorded by the airline. So, what do you think of my guess? Uh, I don't know. I'd like to hear your opinion as a former FBI special agent. Ah, we get it. We aren't persons of interest. We're the suspects. But what about our alibi? What alibi? I've had enough of your bullshit. Wow, actual animations. Check this out. You haven't taken a single step out of this room? That Agent Jones is your witness? Surveillance cameras can easily be tampered with. Especially by someone like you, who knows all about how the FBI works. You're possessed by death. Go and take a look at your own face in the mirror. You look like the Grim Reaper. After you visited both Lucare and Greenvale, you left a mountain of corpses in your wake. You can make all the excuses you want. I'm immune to them. Right here, right now, I want to know everything. You tell me the truth. Yes! You're good, Bill. Damn good. <laughs> Rimming with potential. Don't you think she's the perfect partner for our last dance? What do you say, my fairy? Don't you agree? She's good. So, good. <sighs> what do you want to know? We've got nothing to hide. Go on, question us. This is how it's got to be. Doesn't this remind you of something? You know what I mean, my fairy? <laughs> wow. Damn. <laughs> I love you, York. Judo. <laughs> Say hi, Judo. Yeah. Bark, bark. You know, Judo gets excited. He doesn't meow anymore. He barks, so he's hard to hear. We're back. <coughs> well, oh, well, okay. How did this happen in my town? God damn it. The head and limbs were severed and lined up, according to the lines that were drawn with her blood. Just like migratory birds flying systematically across the sky. Hey, Zach, what do you think this means? Uh -huh. They're severed roots. Yep. Yeah, her name severed. is Patricia. This is the way the Clarksons kill someone when they want to cut them off from the family. And how do you know about this? Everyone in town knows about it. They're just too scared to talk. What does the V stand for, then? Beats me. What, you think I know everything now? Vilatatio. It means quarrel in Latin. That's what the V stands for. Damn, someone paid attention. Latin. Intriguing. In Eke Romane. <laughs> There are no defense wounds on the corpse. In other words, Galena showed no signs of resistance when she was amputated. But, strangely enough, there are small traces of subcutaneous bleeding around the wounded areas. That's a vital reaction, which means she couldn't have been dead. You mean... Yes, that's right, Patty. Galena was amputated while she was still alive. Why is the kid allowed in here to look at this, by the way? Is that even possible? It certainly isn't impossible. Oh, wow, it's For obvious example, now. She's wearing a locket that has a dragonfly on it. Or mm -hmm. if she desired the amputation herself. 
Why would she ever desire that? Oh, Mr. York, I'm sorry, but there ain't no way that could have happened. How can you be sure of that, Melvin? Data doesn't lie, bro. The world contains phenomena that could never be explained with logic. This is especially true for phenomena in which humans are involved. Do you really think He's all bouncing. the facets of love and hmm? hate can be explained with logic? Well, uh, no, I, I don't reckon I do. Yeah, might be too early to rule out those possibilities, just like you say. Zach, now we truly know just how deeply the Clarksons are involved with this. Yeah. Patty, how long does it take to reach the Clarkson estate? Um, just a short drive. You just gotta head west along the Mississippi. You can't miss it. Got it. Thank you, Patty. By the way, Melvin, no matter how accelerated Patty may be, don't you think she's still a bit too young to see something like this? Seriously. <laughs> For the record, I have no intent to instruct others on how to raise their children, but... Holy moly, you're right! Patricia, CLG! Come on, sweetie. Kids shouldn't have to see stuff like this. Daddy, it's too <laughs> late now. <sighs> I mean, she took it pretty well, but... Oh, Melvin. <laughs> he does his best. Yeah. Are you okay, CLG? I'm fine. Besides, I'm used to seeing stuff like that on CSI. Uh, uh yeah. Yeah. You're the one who looks pale, Daddy. Well, it did shake me up a little. But I'll be back to normal in no time. Kids could possibly have a difficult time not like separating fact from fiction. That's true. I'm sorry about that, Mr. York. What say we rest in the interrogation room till we all calm down, CLG? Sure thing, Daddy. Oh, she's so sweet, though. I'm gonna go sit with Daddy for a bit, Agent York. We can join back up later. She's definitely gonna have to pull that one back out during therapy in the future, though. Well, a little bit. killed her daughter, so her family cut ties with her. Do you really think that's what happened here, Zach? If this is truly the ritual that the Clarksons used to cut ties with someone, why would they go out of their way to do it here, in a holding cell? They could have easily done it after we released her. And judging from how Danny Clarkson was acting, I think it's clear that he really loved Galena. How could he accept this grotesque butchering, even if it was for the sake of the family? There's no point in ruminating on this. We should get back to the investigation. As long as we keep moving, the answer will inevitably fling itself straight at us. Let's hope maybe not literally. <laughs> it might. What, so I can't go look? I guess. All right. We did it. Yay, we, di we, we did it. Well, I made some snacks. Do you guys want something? Aw, oh, man, they only got, like gross vending machine coffee and soda I'm gonna just say it right here and right now as a New York native I fucking hate root beer <laughs> I know it's blasphemy cause like people people in New York love root beer as much as people in the south love sweet tea which I also ab abhor um uh oh yeah, I hate root beer. It's gross. There he comes. Oh, hey, what's up? It's time for the jam. This music is so good. You found the flying serpent. But now, the flying serpent will come to find you. Yeah, that sounds right. And it looks like this flying serpent is a venomous one. Some become feasts, while others are eaten alive. 
Which fate would you prefer? Both sound marvelous. But <laughs> let me check with Zack. A fine answer. <laughs> it's more of a non-answer. Find the one who fired the pistol at heaven. Within the white hall of beds, brandish the ticket to the goddess. And once again, you will see the other world. Do you comprehend the oracle? Zack, it looks like he's hell-bent on leading us back into that other world. Follow the Oracle. Oh, I will, Hoongan. There are only two types of things in our world. Things that should be resisted, and things that should be accepted. And I believe this Oracle is something to accept. Bops over. <laughs> Do you think we're crazy for believing everything that skeletal gentleman says? Nah, if a skeletal gentleman came up to you and told you an oracle, wouldn't you be inclined to accept everything that he said? I mean, I would. That guy was super snazzy, too. If he came up to me and told me my fate, I would accept it. No, we're not crazy. Not one bit. <laughs> this is our destiny, that's all. Yeah, it's our destiny. But I shouldn't need to explain that to you, Zach. Huh. The one uh -huh. who fired the pistol at heaven. Firing pistols at the sky might be a rather common occurrence for the South. Bro, you have no idea. <laughs> Young Guns, 1988, directed by Christopher King. <laughs> There's that great scene where Emilio Estevez keeps firing his Colt M1877 up at the sky. Well, but that film took place in New Mexico, didn't it? And the Oracle probably isn't referring to a situation like that. It's, it's got to be for some purpose. I've never even been here. Thompson's farm? Or a threat. Raising a pistol up to the sky, then slowly pulling the trigger. Kind of sounds like the start to a race. Don't you agree, Zach? Uh... I don't know. If I were to fire a pistol at the sky, I would do it from a farm, honestly. Or a bank. But I'm gonna go with farm. We're, yeah, we're looking for Yosemite Sam. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, I don't know about this one. I'm gonna say farm, because that's what southern culture would make me believe is the place. Yeah, see? I know the south. We're currently running a race here. And the one who started this murder investigation is indeed the one who fired the pistol at heaven. In other words, the person who first discovered the body. Sure, I remember who that is. According to the files, Lisa's body was discovered by Chuck Thompson, a crawfish farmer. I remember, I remember that. He apparently works out of a fishing hut located in the marshes south of the body. You guys don't remember this shit? You haven't been paying attention, man. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> who knows? We might even get to see some crawfish. <clears throat> what? Why isn't the murderer the one who started this race? Zack, this isn't like you. Of course the murderer isn't the one who started the race. The murderer is running it. They're currently in first place. And they're breaking all the rules. It's like when you take the jump in Mario Kart on Rainbow Road. Sure fucking that. cheater. Any more objections, Zack? Within the White Hall of Beds. This one is even easier. There are only a few establishments that have a whole hall's worth of beds. Especially in a small town like this. I'm sure you've already got a pretty good idea about what the answer is, Zach. I'm confused a little, though. It's all lined up. Only an amateur would hear that and think it must be referring to a brothel. I mean, but... Oh, come on. It's oh, not white. White hall, hall. Is a symbol for a bordello. You really think that's a white hall? Okay, never mind. Oh. Sorry, but I have to. There's a more obvious, a place that anyone would think of when they hear the words white hall. Okay, it's the church, but I don't know about the bed thing. Oh, no, wait. Isn't that also double as a clinic? It's a clinic. Yeah. I forgot. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. You never disappoint me, Zach. <laughs> yeah, the bed store. Where's, uh, where's their mattress king at? It's a medical facility. They invite their patients into rooms full of beds 
where they're tended to by doctors and nurses clad in white. It's definitely a white hall, where people are invited into beds. You always manage to impress me with your intuition. I'm not gonna lie, I forgot it was a clinic, but... <laughs> counting on you here, Zach, and I know I'll always be able to. No pressure. We're going to the farm first. I don't... I hate... Agent York! The idea of going to this church. Without your trustworthy assistant? Hello there, Patty. I'd never attempt such a thing. <laughs> I was simply engaging in a battle of wits with Hoongan while I waited for you. Hoongan? Yes, the skeletal gentleman in the top hat. Not that story again. Bro, come on. Is this how you always conduct your investigations? This is the way I work. I bet you can't find a single partner. Not even in the entire FBI. Wow. That's not true. I always work together with Zack. That's true. Oh, right. Zack. Don't worry. I'll be your partner while you're here in our town. Now, let's go investigate. She's really cute, though. I do love her. I want to know... Okay, but York may be dumb sometimes, but he's observant in, like, freakish ways enough to notice her necklace by now. Is he just not saying anything out of politeness? Probably. He certainly does suspect that something's up with her quote-unquote family. So I'm wondering now if Candy, her quote-unquote mother, that is quote-unquote sick... Is a Clarkson, or if there's something deeper than that going on? Or is quote unquote dead? I mean, that's what it it seems to me like she is dead, but I don't know what's up with that. Yeah. Also, the more important question: Where is Kelly Clarkson? <laughs> <laughs> How does she fit into all of this? She got out. She got out. <laughs> Hello. She left with what's Hello. his name. Goodbye. <laughs> oh God, no. <laughs> oh, Judo. The pit, the pit. Judo, come say hi. I'm getting attacked by tail. You're being so sweet. That purr is so loud. We should have a cat cam. <laughs> it's not like we use a webcam otherwise. Oh shit. Oh fuck. So he literally did come to you. God, really? He's like mama? boss. So, yo, that hot shot FBI agent I keep hearing about. And who might you be? I came to claim the body of my daughter. My daughter, who was murdered in a holding cell after you detained her yesterday. Zach, I wasn't expecting to run into the final boss. <laughs> <laughs> right? The head of the Clarkson family, P.J. Clarkson. And you've come to claim the body of Galena Clarkson, whose dismembered corpse was found early this morning. Is that correct? Where did you learn that Galena had been murdered? Zach and I just learned of the news ourselves. This is Lucari. And I, I am PJ Clarkson. Yes, that is what I just said. And I happen to agree. I see. So then you must also know about the severed roots ritual. I have a question for you, Philip. Oh, Who's shit. That Galena was murdered by someone from the Clarkson family. Have you given that possibility any consideration? Listen up, you FBI piece of shit. You better watch your manners around my paw. Shut up, else, Daniel. <laughs> but, sir. <laughs> Bad, sir. <laughs> the adults are talking. You know I once had three children. It's all right. But I must not have raised them very well. Because my son, 
and my eldest daughter both ran away and never came back to me. Interesting. The only one who stayed by my side was my second daughter, Galena. The eldest and daughter was Kelly Clarkson. Daniel here into the family and presented me with both an heir and a granddaughter. It seemed for a while as if things were finally starting to calm down. But then, someone corrupted both Galena and Lise. And I lost everything. His beard is Son really freaking me out. Shit heel son in law, that is. Oh, man. <laughs> you understand me, F. Galena's death is nothing but a loss for the Clarkson family. That doesn't mean the Clarksons are automatically innocent, though. Humans don't always act out of self-interest, do they? That mouth. You're starting to sound more and more like your mother. We're leaving, Daniel. What? Treasure. Now, whether you end up being an angel or a demon, I reckon you're the man I've been waiting for all this time. Once you finish that autopsy and we're clear to take her home, I want you to give me a call. Damn. They're phenomenal, Yikes. Patty. So perfectly rural. <laughs> Ominous Whoops. statements, foul-mouthed insults. This town possesses a complicated system of communication that you just can't find in the city. Work-centric emails are so cold and lifeless. But you don't mean you don't get anything out of ask for my last email. Connections as visceral as blood itself. <sighs> so, Agent York, what's next on your agenda? The last boss may have gotten the jump on us, Patty. <laughs> <laughs> that has to be intentional. It has to be. Oracles, and that's that. First, we should head to either the home of the person who discovered Lisa's body or to the town's medical facility. Well, Zach, what do you think? I do not want you to take me to church. I want to go to the farm first. Why don't you use cam anymore? Uh, just because it's a hassle to set up, because literally because I'm lazy. And also because most of the time, on the rare occasion that I stream, I'm in my pajamas, I'm disheveled. And I don't, I'm, you don't, I'm literally like a gremlin. <laughs> like, you, you, it's not anything anybody wants to look at, to be completely honest. Sometimes. You don't want me to unleash this upon the internet. <laughs> like, <laughs> Just imagine just rolling right the fuck out of bed into a, a, a pile of trash. Uh, and then into a gamer chair. That's me. <laughs> I simp gremlins. <laughs> oh boy. There's a reason that you guys are, you guys stick around, I guess. We, we're, we're kindred. But like stand users, we draw together. <laughs> um, I suppose I should save. It is well after midnight. Yeah. Jeremus, at the very least, has to go to bed. I have to attempt to sleep at a point, because I don't... I do have some work... I have voiceover stuff to do tomorrow. But you have a specific time that you have to wake up. load in there or are you going to use the phone over there? What? Well, oh. I forgot. It's so strange to see pay phones everywhere in 2005, but this is a really rural town and they did have a lot of pay phones around in 2005 in Carolina Beach. Mm -hmm. No one ever used them, but they were there. Yep. What? 
<laughs> Why did Pokemon Teeth come out and we still don't have Pokemon Sleep? Wait, I'm sorry? Wait, what? Oh, 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 oh. It's, it's that advertisement game. I don't know. That's a spoof, ain't it? For kids. Pokemon Teeth? Oh, wait, is that one of those things it's that... It's like a dental thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you're brushing your teeth, you, like, play a mini game or something. Okay, that's a terrifying name, though. They really should have rethought that. <laughs> um, anyways, <laughs> I'm going to go now, and you guys also uh, should have a great night and stuff. I would host someone, but I don't. We've 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 gotten we've dwindled to a point where I'm like, do I really? Is there a point? I don't know. It's called Pokemon Smile. Okay, that's way better. <laughs> Pokemon Teeth it sounds like something straight out of an Eldritch Horror, <laughs> like, nightmare. Pokemon Sleep would be great, though. It could be one of those things that helps, like, those uh, white noise things that helps you go to sleep, but it's like... It's like Pokemon noises. Yeah, it's Pokemon noises. Some, of, I, Not all of them are, are super obnoxious. I think most of those would be uh, okay, and then others would not. There's there's some Pokemon that have very uh, pleasing cries to hear. Mm -hmm. And then you just get woken up by Victory Bell. Just Victory Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, have a great night. I'll see you guys uh, see, uh, sometime within the week or so. Within the week, we'll say within the week. We'll get we'll get further in this. Yeah. I'm working my way through it slowly. Be patient with my mental illness. I appreciate it. Okay, bye! Good night!